So let's just sort of look at this in a musical context here. So here's our Schoenberg melody that we've been focusing on here. Let's hear this one more time. humming that in our sleep by this point. Now, let's look at this other line below it. This is uh, from the same string quartet. The violin two-part plays this a few measures after the violin one plays the first one. So let's listen to it. Now, I think on the surface, we wouldn't immediately hear those as being too, too, too connected. But... The beauty of this inversion system is that they really are inherently tied together in a really, really critical and structural way. Now, we're going to see that these are also transposed from one another because they're not starting on the same note, right? First one starts on D. The second melody that we're looking at starts on G. But the inversional elements are 100% identically tied together. So let's see how that works. So let's look at this first interval here in the violin one part. We've got D or two to C sharp, which we also call one. What's What did we say the interval was between one, no, sorry, two and one? This is a little strange. Remember, we're always going clockwise. We said it's 11, right? So two to one is an interval of 11 or a transposition of 11 in this system. Now look at the first two notes of the violin two part, which go from seven to eight. What did we, what would we call that? What's the distance there? Seven to eight. It's one. And so what we can see is these first two notes, whether it's D to C sharp, two to one, or G to A flat, seven to eight, actually do share a common origin. They invert to one another. 11 inverts to one because it adds up to 12. And because we can see, we would just, in our old way of talking about it, we would say the first one is a half step down, second one's a half step up. Those are clearly related to one another. The farther away distances are a little more difficult to see, and that's why we need this new language. Let's look at another interval. Let's look at the next pairing of notes. In the violin one part, we've got C-sharp, one, down to A natural, which we would call nine. What's the distance from one to nine? Remember, go clockwise. It's eight. That's always good. So now let's look at the second to third note in the violin two part. We've got A-flat, which we're going to call the note eight, going up to the note zero. What would we call that? Eight to zero is four. And what do you know? Eight and four are an inverted pair, right? Eight plus four gets us to 12. And we can see this C sharp down to A natural has a lot in common with A flat up to C natural because they are inversionally related to one another. And so if we just look at those first uh, if we just look at those first three notes in the violin one part, right, two, one, nine, and the first three notes of the violin two part, we can hear that there's a sense of relationship there. They are inverted from one another. All right, so we're going to keep practicing these inversion ideas. I, this is one of the more important elements of this to understand, but just to see how the order keeps these notes related to one another even when they're done in an inverted way.